Hi and welcome to my video series of cell signaling. In this video, we'll be talking about G protein coupled receptor signaling under phototransduction. Now, vision is one of the best special senses because that allow us to see the world and how beautiful it is, right? Now, let us try to understand what is the molecular mechanism and neurobiological aspect underlying the vision. Now, this is our eye. At the back of the eye, there is a screen known as retina. Inside retina, there are several layers of cells and we get to know about these cells in shortly. Now, among these cells, there is one particular type of cell which is known as rod cells. These rod cells give us sensitivity towards low light vision. There is another version known as cone cell which allow us to see a colored vision. In the rod cell, in the peripheral region of the rod cell, there are pigments known as rhodopsin, which are located in these membrane imaginations known as discs. Now, in rhodop rhodopsin, there are specific pockets. And in these pockets of the rhodopsin, you can find a molecule known as retinal. To be specific, it is 11 cis retinal. 11 cis retinal is embedded in the deep hydrophobic pocket of this G protein coupled receptor rhodopsin. When light hits this particular uh, rhodopsin molecule, there is a conformational change which leads to conversion of uh, cis retinal to a trans format, a trans retinal. Now, this conformational change has consequences, but before that, let me tell you that the retinal is actually derived from beta carotene. Beta carotene is cleaved in specific places in its polyprenoid chain to give rise to all trans retinal, which is the pigment inside the rhodopsin, or which is the phototransducing system inside the rhodopsin. Now, let us look at the signaling transduction mechanism bit more details. So, rhodopsin, as it's a G protein coupled receptor, it's a seven transmembrane domain coupled receptor, and it has like seven transmembrane domains. Now, rhodopsin is generally coupled with a G protein, a trimeric G port protein, which is known as transducin. Transducin has three G protein subunits, alpha, beta, and gamma, just like a GS signaling regime. Now, when light hits, what happens is few things. First of all, after hitting the light, the external he helices of rhodopsin gets tilted. As a result, there is a opening of a site in which the transducin can get interact act, interaction. And as a result, what happens is in the transducin, there is a hydrolysis of GDP and the, there is an exchange of GTP. Now, once in a GTP bound state, Transducin is active. The active transducin leave the trimeric state and activate another phosphodiesterase molecule, a particular enzyme which is destined to degrade phosphodiester bond and it actually converts cyclic guanosine monophosphate into only GMPs. Now what is the consequence of that and what ha what type of uh, relation does it have with vision? We'll get to know soon. Now, normally, when there is a dark state or there is absence of light, there are cyclic nucleotide gated channels, which are basically uh, cyclic GMP gated channels. These channels allow sodium influx inside the cell, and that's why the cells were always depolarized. Now, when there is no light, the cells are depolarized. I repeat, when there is no light or in a dark situation, the cells are depolarized state. This might be pretty much awkward for you, but this is the case. We always think, okay, the light would activate the neuron and that would lead the signal transduction. But here, these photoreceptor neurons, they have a different regime. They're always active. They're constitutively active. They're always firing. But when the light hits them, they stop firing. Now, in a moment, it would be very clear. So stay tuned. Now, 
what happens is when cyclic GMP is cyclic GMP uh, is actually degraded to only GMP by the action of phosphodiesterase, the level of cyclic GMP falls down. As a result, the cyclic GMP get it channels no more pump in sodium inside the cells, right? Now what happens is the cells become hyperpolarized because there is a constant potassium outflux. So inner side of the cell is be becoming more negative. Now what happens is look at this synapse between a bipolar cell and a photoreceptor cell. When the situation is like dark or there is no light, there is a lot of neurotransmitter release, especially glutamate release in this terminal, and the neuron is constitutively active. It's a depolar state of this photoreceptor neuron. But whenever there is light, less neurotransmitter is uh, released from the terminal because now we know because whenever there is light, there is activity of the cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase and reduced activity of our cyclic nucleotide gated channels. And that's why the neuron cannot be in a depolarized state. The neurons in presence of light is now in a hyperpolarized state. Now you might be thinking that okay in a hyperpolarized state how does the neuron send the signal to the brain? How it is possible? Now action potential is just an all or none phenomena. It's a lot similar like binary code. So you might think okay binary in binary one has a value and zero also has a value right? Similarly, having action potential means something and also not having action potential means something as well. So when there is a suppression of the activity in response to light, that leads to a higher order signal in our visual cortex, which is located at the backside of our brain. And that is processed, processed by higher order brain centers. And that's how our visual perception is created in the visual cortex. But how the visual cortex process that signal or decode that signal that is beyond the discussion of this particular video. Now one of the most important feature of this pathway is the signal amplification capability. It turns out that one molecule of rhodopsin can at least activate 800 molecules of transducins. Now transducin can one transducin molecule can activate one cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase but there is a twist the cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase molecule can at least hydrolyze six molecules of cyclic GMP that means if 800 molecules of cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase was activated by 800 transducin molecule now there would be 4800 cyclic GMP broken down to GMP that would lead to massive change in each step and each step the degree of change is more and thereby we can understand the signal amplification. Now what happens is there are like several mechanisms which can allow the cell to get back to its firing state or restore its firing state and one such molecule is beta arresting which would sort of arrest the transducin from interacting with the phosphodiesterase. As a result, cyclic GMP level would be restored and build up. Not only that, in absence of transducing activating uh, phosphodiesterase, there is another molecule known as another protein known as guanylyl cyclase, which would convert GMP to cyclic GMP. Now, all these mechanisms in a combined way would restore the uh, active uh, restore the level of cyclic GMP what it would result is influx of sodium from outside to inside. That means the cells would be now depolarized. And that is how after you, after you uh, uh, see something, your neurons stopped firing for that time and that is perceived in the higher brain or brain center. And after a while, all the machinery is ready again to make that neuron constitutively active. So in this video, we kind of looked at the mechanism of signal transduction, the neurobiology behind phototransduction, and not only that, the regulation of phototransduction at a molecular level. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. 
and please don't forget to like share and subscribe and please let me know in the comment how do you like my videos thank you